what is the small grants fund? Um, this first section is fairly short. Um, I just wanna roll through so we understand and then we'll get into the actual application. So the small grant fund, so the funding comes from the government of Manitoba Municipal Relations. It's divided among all the neighborhood renewal corporations. So for example, there's three in Winnipeg, there's one in Thompson, there's one in Flin Flon, et cetera, et cetera, and where there's one here. Um, and we, because we know our communities the best, we distribute those funds to our communities. So the small grant fund, it's intended to support new small projects. They have to happen within the town of the Paw. And they're meant to bring people together and respond to the priorities of TPCRC. Those priorities are all on our website and um, we can share them as well. The funds then are provided to local groups, organizations, nonprofits, et cetera, um, that require modest short-term project funding. So our goal is to be a startup support for pilot programs slash events that will continue to grow in the future. It's kind of a catch-22 in that it needs to be something new and it needs to end by March 31st, but our hope is it acts like a pilot, which will then continue. It's, yeah. Yeah. So who can apply? Okay, so nonprofit organizations. Um, we can also have community-based organizations that are incorporated or unincorporated and community groups. So it could even be somebody like the Paw Curling Club, as long as they have a bank account in their name because those who apply, that's who the check is written to. And that's who has to fill out the final paperwork. Um, so although um, our programming is intended for the tri area because we see ourselves as a tri community, OCN, Arm of Kelsey and the Paw, um, the province does not. So uh, our actual programming has to happen within the confines of the Paw. So someone from OCN could apply, but the actual program has to happen in the town of the Paw. And everyone is welcome. Yeah. This thing's being a little finicky, sorry. Okay. So um, I mentioned to you briefly, priority is given to new applicants, uh, but everyone can apply again if they have in the past. Um, and they can apply multiple times throughout the year. Um, but again, if somebody new is applying, they'll be bumped up on the priority list. And there we go. Okay, so what projects are eligible? So they have to align with um, our six priorities that were found in our five-year plan. Um, and so those are crime and safety, parks and recreation with a youth and family emphasis, housing, physical environment, image and pride, community economic development, and community wellness and well-being. So just to give some past uh, examples, so crime and safety, um, just this year, they ran a harm reduction and community barbecue. They installed um, outdoor sharps containers in the Manitoba housing area um, and taught education on how to properly dispose of those sharps. Um, we've ran the party program, so preventing alcohol and risk-related trauma in youth. So those are a couple examples. Parks and Recreation, uh, we funded the disc golf course that's down in, I want to say Kinsman Park. I always say the wrong park names, I apologize. Um, winter Active, so we had free swims and skates during the winter months to provide barrier-free physical activities to low-income families. We've also done murals, etc., things like that. Housing, um, we've actually never had a project applied for, and I think we've been doing this since 2015, I want to say. I checked our entire database. So um, any type of housing program would be prime for approval. And I had people ask questions. So that would be things like, maybe you want to run a rent smart program where you teach people how to be a good tenant and they can take that certificate and they can show it to a landlord um, if they've never rented before, or they have no references. Um, it could be a pilot project. Um, we could be a portion of the funding to start transitional housing, things like that. Those would all be really um, prime for being approved. Okay. So physical environment, image, and pride. Um, we funded the Kelsey Community School outdoor classroom slash picnic area. Uh, the Rosie Main Nochebuck Trail, so the self-guided interpretive trail. Uh, this was... Previously, when we were seen as a tri-area, of course, again, the province has now cracked down and it has to happen within the town of the Paw, unfortunately. Um, also, community garden and container gardening. We funded a project on that before. 
So community economic development, um, the futures job training series, uh, TPCRC is allowed to, they prefer we don't, but they, we are allowed to um, apply to our own fund. Um, and we ran a series of job trainings, everything from CPR, first aid, um, yeah. computer classes. Uh, yeah. So job training, um, a handicraft series. So that taught sewing, um, knitting. I ran one of those when I was with a different organization. Um, mm -hmm. And we had a workshop training on customer service before as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Community wellness and well-being. So uh, just last year, um, Seniors Day In was applied for, and that was activities to work with those who had dementia. Uh, the Women's Gathering, which was Matriarchs in the Making. So that was an Indigenous gathering for women, and it taught them, um, I think we funded a portion of it, which was to bring in Jackie Travers, who is a, a world famous indigenous artist and they did paint nights and it was supposed to fund a uh, comedian who canceled. So that portion of the funding came back to us. Um, William McCarthy suicide prevention performance. He went into schools and he had a public performance and taught uh, talked about uh, his own life and um, it was a suicide prevention um, performance, live music. Mm -hmm. The Paw and Area uh, FASD, fetal alcohol, Center of Disorder uh, Awareness Walk. So those are a couple of the ones we have. Um, projects that are ineligible. Okay, so people, if they have a long-standing annual event in the community, like for example, Canada Day or Trappers Festival, can they seek funding to continue it? No, the funding is intended to create new programs and projects like pilot projects in the community. Um, it is possible to seek funding for a newer, smaller project within the event. So for example, Trappers Festival applies to us, uh, but like last year, we funded music at the Ice Palace because they've never had live music or an Ice Palace in the Paw before. So we could fund that. Mm -hmm. um, our event is already underway, but we require additional funding. Can we apply to help supplement our budget? No, funding is intended to create new programs and projects. Um, and the biggest one that we tell all of our applicants is do not advertise your event before the funding is applied for and we've approved it through small grants or the event is considered underway and not applicable for funding. So if any poster goes out that says this event is happening, then we have to then tell you it's already underway and we cannot fund you. It's very sad, it happened to a group, of, a couple groups. Okay. Um, we've already purchased some items, items or paid out honoraria. Can we apply for a small grant to recover these funds? No, all dollars must be spent after you've received your letter of approval for your application and then receive the payment from TPCRC. We will give you the all okay to start spending money. Um, all original receipts and invoices will be turned over to us. Of course, if they're digital, they can be just emailed to us um, with the final project report after your project is completed. And that has to be done within 21 days of your project completion. What expenses are eligible? So we cover honoraria like facilitator fees or instructor fees. Supplies, so things like if you're teaching crafts, we would uh, cover all the crafting supplies. Or if you're doing um, food safe, we would cover the books, etc. cetera. Uh, venue rental for the actual event to happen. Um, we do not cover um, renting your own venue though, of course, it would have to be an outside venue. Yeah. What expenses are not eligible? So ongoing wages and admin fees. So if you have someone on staff, we can't pay your own staff and honoraria for example, um, and that's mentioned in the next point, um, fuel and mileage to go travel around buy these things. We don't cover that. Ongoing operating expenses, you know, we won't cover your power bill. <laughs> Repairs to public or nonprofit facilities. Uh, redevelopment of private property. Uh, so for example, we had someone who applied and wanted to uh, put up a community mural, which we were very excited about, but um, an individual offered up their private fence. We can't pay to put a mural on a private fence, even if it's publicly seen, because they could then paint that fence anytime they wanted to. Um, so fundraising events or events with admission. So anything that you offer to the public must be barrier free. So there, it can't be a fundraiser and you cannot charge admission of any kind. Like if you have a concert, you can't sell tickets. They have to be free. Okay. So, okay, the actual application, we'll jump right into it, how to fill it out. Okay, so we have three types of application forms. Uh, one is online, it's actually a Google form and uh, it's our most preferred. Um, I always stress that one. It's really easy to do, you fill it right in, hit the submit button and we have it instantly. Um, but for those who are not as tech savvy or their computers don't work with Google Forms, we have a Microsoft Office Word document version. Um, this is second best. 
And then we have a PDF version if you're not computer savvy at all. Like I said, we prefer to fill it out online because otherwise I have to retype everything into the computer later. <laughs> so, but we have three versions. We want everyone to be able to fill it out. So the online version. Okay. So let's see, it should pull up here. Okay. So this is the online version. It's available on our website or you can just request it from us. I think we also have it posted on our social media um, and there's a link to it. So the top page just shows everything I talked about, who can apply, the priorities, et cetera. And to fill it out, so we just start with project title. Um, obviously name it whatever you're gonna call it to the public. So it's the harm reduction and safety community barbecue. Uh, name of the organization or group. So Mike, in my case, it would be the Paw Community Renewal Corporation. Um, this is who exactly who the check is going to get made out to. So write your name correctly. Um, physical location where the project will take place. It's always the PAW. And if you know that you want it to happen at the Métis Hall, et cetera, you can say so. Uh, two individuals with signing authority. So usually that's the head of your organization or group and maybe your financial person, but um, any two uh, will do. And the main reason is if I need to get a hold of somebody, and I'll go further into that, if I need to get a hold of somebody, oh, I have first choice and second choice if we're in a hurry to put your application through. Um, all persons on the planning committee and the board of directors. So if, um, for example, uh, MMF The Paw Local um, has a, we'll call it program committee, I need to know everyone on that committee and the board of directors, so it would be your executives. Um, the main reason why is then when I take it to my board, I know instantly, oh, so-and-so is also sitting on yours and so I won't bother them and they uh, they abstain from voting, of course. So primary contact, usually the person who fills out the application, name, position within the organization, address. Um, this address is usually where the check is going to get mailed, not your personal, if we need to mail it or any letters. Um, phone number and of course, email address. And the, it's the exact same thing for the secondary contact. Okay. Okay, next page. Project start date. Um, we say don't underestimate this because it this application has to go to our board uh, for our board meeting and then get voted in. Or pardon me, voted yes or no. So uh, if it's too early and it hits the board meeting, we instantly have to say no because we're past your start date and we presume your project has already started. Um, and your completion date, uh, same thing, take as much as you want, but the date can't be past March 15th because we need to have all your forms, receipts, everything back in so that we can report to the province and close small grants. Okay. Okay, target the population uh, the project will serve. Um, so I put an example in here low income families, um, you would say, um, in your case, Connie, uh, we are targeting um, local Métis citizens uh, are our focus. However, everyone is a welcome to attend uh, between this age to this age um, and all nationalities, etc. So tell us exactly who you want to, but um, of course we want everything to be as barrier free and as open as possible. Yeah. Uh, how will you target residents of the PAW? So that's your advertising, et cetera. So perhaps you're going to go on the radio, you're going to list it in the newspaper, um, you're going to uh, put it on social media, et cetera. And maybe you're gonna um, send it directly to your citizens. That's what we wanna know, because we wanna know people are gonna attend it. Um, how will TPCRC be acknowledged? So you will find it in our letter of agreement. Our logo is to be included on all advertising as is the province of Manitoba. So you could say that um, um, you're going to put our logo on the posters, you're going to do a public thank you at the event, maybe you're going to uh, thank us on the radio, etc. We just need to know that somehow um, you're letting the public know the funding came from us. So what neighborhood slash community support is there for your project? Um, so I have lots of people just put in C letters of support, but what we wanna know is, um, for example, oh, I've had citizens come to me and ask for these training. Um, we went to the region and they found that citizens are short in all of these areas. Or five years ago, we ran one of these programs and it was super popular and we had a waiting list twice the amount of people who attended. We want to know, again, that people are going to come out to it. Okay. Um, and your letters of support. So 
two letters of support you have to have. If you have more, that's fine, but we don't need them. Um, you can add them right here on the add file um, and it will attach right on here and send it right to us. Um, so letters of support can come from any other nonprofit group organization, not from businesses um, and not from anyone within your own organization. So for example, um, you know, Connie, if uh, somebody else filled out this form at the POT MMF local and uh, you were sitting on golden agers, you can't, you can't fill it out for the golden agers. Um, but uh, this can be anyone from, um, I name a few, Aurora House, um, the Kinsmen, the Kinnets, uh, the Town of the Paw, um, Cree Nation Tribal Health, any of those organizations. It's sometimes a good idea that say you were applying for sports equipment, maybe to go to Kelsey Recreation. And if it's for youth, maybe go to the Paw Family Resource Center, you know, something that's sort of relatable. Okay. Okay. Next one. All right, so what is the goal or purpose of your project? So we want to know what you actually plan to do with this project. So maybe you want to, um, if you're doing job training, um, I want to um, help our local citizens get employed or help them get side gigs. It's not about the main employment. Um, if you're buying sports equipment, you want to have more families involved. Um, you want to improve mental wellness in the winter if maybe you're paying for swims at the local pool, things like that. Um, and describe the project activities and timeline. Okay, so this one we want really clear and concise. We are going to run five classes of CPR for one for adults, one for women, one for men, one for children, um, and we're going to run one a month. Short to the point, but we want to know exactly what is happening. Um, please identify who will be involved in the project and the number of the PAW residents involved. So who will be involved might be, um, we're going to hire a local um, Métis instructor. Um, we expect to have, there's enough room for 10 people and we're gonna run 10 sessions. So a hundred people should attend, um, make it realistic, but because um, we, we wanna know that you're not going to run CPR for just two people, you know, and and, pay, and we're going to pay like $2,000 for it. It's not really viable. Um, how will yeah. this project build community and connect community members? Um, so renewal corporations are very big on community connectedness and building community. It's kind of our number one priority. So for this, um, maybe you're going to draw in more citizens. You're going to, if you're running some, maybe you're going to bring awareness to Métis culture, um, like how is it going to improve the paw essentially? Okay, and then getting to the end. So total refunding funding request from TPCRC community grant. Um, so we need to know um, the exact amount. Um, your and I'll explain this later. Your budget is going to have to match this, and I'm and we have a lot of people who accidentally it doesn't, and then it the your application goes right back to you so you can work on it some more. So the total amount, um, so for example, if your amount in your budget is $4,999, this cannot say 5,000. It has to say $4,999. Um, and the total project cost. So uh, this one includes um, all of your in-kind. So for example, maybe you're going to pay $2,000 for job training um however in the um overall scheme you actually would have to have the metis hall no we don't pay rent for it because it's yours but it does cost you so um if you're using the meeting room um so you would also add on the 300 dollars for the meeting room um if your manager your metis hall manager is going to be there and they're getting paid 20 an hour and they're going to be there for four hours you would add their wages as in kind. Um, if you're going to do a whole bunch of photocopying, um, you would add the the paper and the admin costs. Um, if you're going to provide coffee, those all of those are all considered in kind, but they're all part of your total project cost. Okay. Okay. And then uh, we have you can upload your budget right here. You can create your own budget. Uh, but it will have to somewhat match what we have. And if you don't want to do your own, you can request and I will send you a budget sheet and I'll go over that one 
um, in the paper form. Um, so again, and then other funding sources. So we talked about that. So again, um, somebody is going to loan the projector. We're going to immigrant services for that. What would that cost to rent? Um, you're going to have your staff member volunteer, well, um, work that day. Those wages are in kind. The hall um, that you're donating for people to use, that's in kind, that counts. Um, if your cleaner is gonna have to come and clean it afterward, that counts too. That's all donations of equipment, labor, venue, those all um, count as other funding sources. And also if you then go and apply for a secondary grant through someone else, or maybe MMF the Paw region donates you $200, uh, that's another funding source. Um, we strongly recommend, we've had a couple applications where uh, people figure they can get the whole five from us so they don't bother seeking donations or cash or in-kind. Um, and so they put zero here and it weakens their application because the province in the ideal world would like matched dollar for dollar, even if it's in kind. So, yeah. Okay, next one. Um, so the last page is easy. Again, it's the signing authority. This is the person we're going to uh, call to take the photo if they get, <laughs> get the check. Um, so um, your name, position, the date, and this form, I will, when I see you in person, have you physically sign it. So it's signed. And then you hit the submit button and it comes right to our email. So that is the online version. And the Word one is fairly similar. I'm just going to go over a couple of things on it to show. So the Word document version. Let's see, I might have to pull it up physically. Okay. So... The Word document version is much the same. Um, it has this same introduction page that explains all the things about small grant. Excuse me. Um, and the same thing again, project title, name of organization. So you just fill in these little gray boxes here. Primary, secondary contact. I'll skim through this because we talked about all this. These are all exactly the same, all the same sections. Yeah. Um, and the only one is the budget page has an actual physical budget. And this is what I would send you if you request one. So your expenses, and we um, we ask again that expenses, you know, if you're going to put materials, we don't know what that means. If you're going to put uh, materials, but in brackets, put paper, pens, um, markers, then we kind of understand. We want to know what you're actually buying. Um the total cost is the entire cost of that item. So if we're doing a projector, let's say the total cost of renting a projector would be $200. How much are you actually requesting from us? Or how much is someone either giving you in a cash donation or in kind? Like if the Paw Immigrant Services were gonna, going to loan this projector, you always fill in the total cost, but it goes also in kind. Um, we get lots of these where we have empty uh, columns and we have to send it back to you because I don't know if the money's coming from us, if it's a cash donation from someone, or if it's just being like labor is in kind, for example. Um, so mm -hmm. fill these all the way out. This, the total of this column, again, as I mentioned before, should match your total request, or sorry, your total project cost. Um, this entire column requested from us should match this when added up. If they don't match, then I send it back to you. Okay. Yeah, just because we need to know where it's coming from. Um, and this one, so this was mentioned briefly in the other one, but this one has a nice little fill out box version. So your other funding sources, we talked about this before. Um, is it coming in cash? Like say maybe um, the Paw Family Resource Center is donating you $200 in cash to run this project. You would put their name, their cash, and this is a nifty little box where you can select if the money has been confirmed or has not. So if you have approached them for a donation, but they haven't confirmed, you'd put no. Um, if they said flat out, yeah, they're giving you money, then yes, it's confirmed. Um, and again, cash or in kind, and you would list all of these and you can add more rows as you go. So this this page, this physical budget page is requestable if you'd like to just fill out our version. If you do your own budget, we just need to know the same information. Okay. And again, here, this is the page that um, you will just have uh, sign it and then we will have your physical signature later. So, so the word document, like I said, is much the same. All right. 
Now, um, I'm not going to go over the PDF version because it is literally the Word version saved as a PDF because some people don't have Microsoft Office. Um, this budget we pretty much just talked about in the Word version. So this is this the um, actual page that I would send you and your other funding sources as well. We highly um, suggest to groups that they come to us and pitch their idea. And the main reason why is that if something doesn't fit or if it's already been approved, uh, we can tell them right there that, oh, hey, um, you're applying for CPR. We've already approved a CPR this year. We won't approve a second one. Um, and then they can switch their idea before filling all the form out, sending it to us. I take it to the board. The board rejects it. I send it back to them. And that's always kind of heartbreaking after all that work, right? Um, we also help fill out the forms. Like if you can uh, say you're filling out the Google version. As long as the form is open, the information will stay in it. Um, it doesn't time out like other forms. Um, and we can send you a PDF version after if you'd uh, if you'd like a copy of it. Because um, I know some groups do and they can reuse it on other grants if, if they're rejected on this one or they can change it and update it. Um, so yeah, and, and uh, call us lots and, and if anything's not understandable and we love to walk people through them because we want them approved. We do keep a good community list of that stuff and even items like say you need um, a projector. Um, anyone who has applied to our small grants, we've started in the last number of years to keep a database of those items, big items. Um, and we can't guarantee that they will loan them out to you because they may have them in storage or whatever else. But we can say contact, for example, the PAW families building a better community. We funded a bounce house. You could call them and see if they would partner with you in that way. And that's also an in-kind donation. Or um, uh, I know we funded sewing machines from the Friendship Center. So if you wanted to run a ribbon skirt class, um, we would say give them a call. They have like five or six of them and um, industrial iron and a yeah. So, um, and instructors too, like we know a lot of local instructors and we prefer local hired over um, outside or online just for accessibility and to hire local. So yeah, we keep a, we keep a big list. <laughs>